Father in heaven, we want to thank you for your many blessings today and for this opportunity to receive a word from you. Revive us, reform us. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Greetings, salutations, and welcome to this Prophetic Insights. We have a very special program for you today. As we can see, COVID-19 and the policies from the government are presently restricting our liberties. There is an ominous crisis ahead of us. A few days ago, I came across an article stating our first, second, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh amendments in the U.S. Constitution are presently under threat, under attack. We are living in a crisis. And all these policies to combat COVID-19 and other pestilences have led many of us to awaken to a new world. Yes, a new world order. Now, I'm not using that phrase loosely. People are telling us it's a new world based on the government policies to stem to combat COVID-19. Friends, we can be certain we have come to a turning point. Yes, friends, a turning point in this world, a turning point even for our churches. It's time for all of us to be prepared spiritually, mentally, financially. Yes, friends, even practically. I came across several articles. Individuals are fleeing the cities, the urban areas, and they're moving to the countries, rural districts, even to the mountains. Why? They are fleeing from civil unrest, even the encroachment of martial law. We are living in a crisis. So at this time, I felt that it was necessary to share with you some practical things. A few days ago, I shared with you this book called Strategic Relocation. The author is Joel Skousen. He also co-authored the book with Andrew Skousen. And friends, I felt that it was necessary to contact Mr. Joel Skousen to come and share with us the wealth of information he has gathered throughout the decades. And today, I have Mr. Joe Skousen with us to share with us his experience. All right, friends. So help me welcome Mr. Joe Skousen. He has authored several books, including this one, Strategic Relocation. So without further ado, Welcome, Mr. Joe Skousen, and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us this evening. Well, thank you very much, Andrew. It's good to be with you, and I especially appreciate your ministry. It's a shame that uh, under the excuse of uh, a very mild pandemic that religious freedom is being curtailed and people, when they need God most, are being told to stay home from churches. So before we delve into country living and strategic relocation tell us briefly about your background and what makes you a survivalist well i was one of the pioneers in the survival movement i wrote my first book the secure home clear back in 1979 and uh, at that time of course it was, the cold war was going on and uh, but even then, I was aware that there was a secret combination of power that was infesting our government and was, uh, you know, on the sly giving weapons technology to Russia and China, building future enemies um, for their own conflict creation purposes. And as you know from biblical prophecies, we're going to have, reap the whirlwind because of much of the wickedness of the nation, and which is continuing. And I think that. Um, so even then, I knew that war was coming. I went into the Marine Corps during the Vietnam era and became a pilot for the Marine Corps. Um, but I soon found that, you know, this 
political conspiracy, the deep state, as we call it now, was even sabotaging our ability to win that war. And so I found that I couldn't influence military policy and got out of the military. I started uh, uh, an architectural firm specializing in high security residences and retreats. Took a leave of absence in 1982. I was called to Washington, D.C. to become the chairman of the Conservative National Committee and the editor of the Conservative Digest. This was during the Reagan administration where uh, the powers that be had forced him to take George H.W. Bush as his vice president, who was a globalist who mentioned the New World Order a hundred times during his, his presidency. And he controlled the Reagan presidency and forced him to do many compromises. When Reagan resisted, of course, they attempted to assassinate him and let him know that, you know, your life is on the line if you don't follow orders. So this is the kind of thing that we're dealing with. Um, I came back to Oregon where I was raising my family after my stint in Washington, but I did learn a lot in Washington about how the deep state worked even then. Uh, it's not a new phenomenon. Uh, it assassinated President Kennedy. It assassinated Martin Luther mm -hmm. King and uh, pulled off many, many very, very evil things, including the biggest of all the conspiracies, which was the 9-11 attack on America, which was done by our own deep state. They hired the terrorists, they planted the explosives in the building. And I documented all of this in my World Affairs Brief, which I started in 1984 when I was in Washington, as I had developed a lot of sources there, and had a lot of experience um, knowing what you can and cannot know uh, in government, and it's still going on. It became an online newsletter in, in the year 2000, and I've been publishing it for the past 20 years online. Hmm. So based on your experience, who, who would you say are the puppet masters of this deep state, as you call it, New World Order? Well, you know, it's it's the best kept secret in the world who's at the very top, all right? But we know many of the main players who uh, dictate government policy, such as George Soros, uh, Henry Kissinger, Zbigniew Brzezinski, when he was alive, was very much, a, uh, Nelson or um, David Rockefeller was much part of it, the Rothschilds were part of it. And it's, we call it an Anglo-American conspiracy because it was uh, centered in the city of London for many, many years. Uh, and I'm talking, when I say the city of London, there's a smaller city within London itself, which is the financial district. And this is what has controlled the world for many years until the U.S. became the predominant financial power. So a lot of the, the power of the New World Order has shifted here, but still a lot of the control happens in Europe. Uh, so the EU is very much part of this globalist conspiracy to take away national sovereignty. And, and particularly their main target is the U.S. Constitution, which guarantees us religious liberty and freedom of speech and uh, habeas corpus and many, many other wonderful things in the Second Amendment. All of these are under threat because of the supposed pandemic. And, you know, you have governors closing gun shops supposedly because of the pandemic, closing churches. And... Uh, I want to state very, very clearly that this is not a deadly disease for normal people. It's only people who have chronic diseases that are at risk uh, with this virus. And so there really is no excuse to be able to be shutting down the entire economy, churches and businesses and restaurants for normal people. And you cannot acquire herd immunity to a virus because these viruses mutate all the time. That's why it doesn't ever do any good. In fact, you never want to take the flu shot because they're not uh, on the current flu. And there's so many damaging factors within those vaccines that your immune system is compromised. The adjuvants they put in these vaccines, for example, trick the immune system into not attacking the vaccine. And in the process, they cause the immune system to be fooled into attacking many parts of the body so that we have new autoimmune diseases constantly threatening our health. And so that's the reason here in the United States, for example, we have a, a higher infection rate among 20 to 45 people rather than in China where it was all older people. And that's because our immune system is compromised here from pushing vaccines on everyone so that 
it's really messed up. It doesn't know what to think when it has an invasive uh, vaccine. But if I can tell you, if the government comes out with a vaccine and they may well do it, don't take it. And if they mandate it, you have to resist and say, I will not you know, take in anything into my body that hasn't been tested and that isn't uh, that I don't feel good about. That's one of our fundamental rights that we must always protect. Thank you so much. I have seen, based on my studies, a connection with the, the Vatican and Jesuits as it relates to controlling the state and even the churches to bring about this new world order. And that's why I asked, based on your experience, who do you think is at the top as movers and shakers in these crises that we're now seeing to restrict our liberties. Now, Mr. Skousen, you could have kept this wealth of information and experience to yourself as it relates to rural living, country living, being prepared for ominous times. What has motivated you to share your, your wealth of information, experience with the world? through books and through lectures and even through interviews like the one that we're having now? Well, part of it is because at a very early age, I was fortunate to have, my, my father died when I was 17. We had 10 children and so we were left to fend for ourselves. Um, I was fortunate to have an uncle, my father's brother, whose name was W. Cleon Skousen, who wrote two very significant books which started me on the path to understanding the secret combinations of power. One was The Naked Communist, which was really about all of the communists that were in our State Department that were undermining, that brought Russia to power and brought China to power and, and gave them nuclear weapons and other things. But he later discovered that it wasn't communists that were protecting communists. It was non-communist in the government who were protecting communists and keeping them from being fired. And he discovered that they were adhering and they believed in a globalist conspiracy that they wanted to take away American liberty. They were building Russia and China up as future enemies to create conflict, to be able to talk Americans into a global new world order based upon war. And they tried to do that in World War I, of course, in the League of Nations, it didn't work. And and then they set the stage for World War II, and we did get a globalist government in World War II, the United Nations, but it had no power. It had no taxing power. It had no military power. And so there's going to be one more world war, a third world war with Russia and China, who they've been preparing to attack us. And it's my estimation because of a secret presidential directive, PDD-60, Presidential Decision Directive 60, which informs our our missile forces to absorb a nuclear first strike rather than launch on warning. That's a very dangerous military thing. As a former military officer, I can tell you, if you absorb a military first strike, you don't have hardly anything to retaliate with. But what, a, what that doctrine does, it causes Americans and the whole world, the Western world who depends on the U.S. military to defend them, to throw up their hands and say, what do we do now? The U.S. military has been decapitated by this first strike. Then the glo our globalist leaders come out of their bunkers, which they prepared to survive that strike, which, by the way, is only on military targets, not cities. Ch Russia and China do not want to destroy the economy of the West. They want to simply decapitate the military so that they can blackmail the West into submission. But our government intends to resist that blackmail. And they're building up secret weapon systems so that they can retaliate after absorbing a nuclear strike. They won't tell us that. They're basically going to come out of their bunkers and say, our military has been decapitated. There's nothing we can do to protect ourselves now except to join in a new militarized global government. And you can see by COVID-19, they throw up a phony, you know, or a not as bad pandemic as it is to talk us out of our liberties. And everybody comes, everyone, the yes man to the doctors and the, the uh, CDC. Well, in the same sense, when our military is struck someday, and I think that's going to happen about the latter part of this decade, so we still have time to prepare. But I 
everyone's going to throw up their hands and just believe whatever government tells us. Yeah, we got to join in a, a new world order. Uh, it'll probably be called League of Democracy to change the name away from the UN, which has a bad reputation, to fool everyone into thinking that there is safety in in, in a militarized global government, but it'll have power now. It'll have taxing power. It'll have power over religion. There may well be the mark of the beast takes place with that new world order as it has an oath of allegiance to ferret out those that believe in conspiracy and lock up those that uh, Christians who refuse to take the oath of allegiance to the new world. I can see all of those prophecies coming to pass when war comes. All right. So with that in mind, when war comes, you mentioned Mark of the Beast, you mentioned New World Order. Those are topics that we spend much time on. Now, with that in mind, I've heard uh, Mr. Trump stated recently that we are presently fighting an invisible enemy, COVID-19. So in light of COVID-19 and the resulting government policies to restrict our liberties gradually. How important is country living, Mr. Skousen? Well, you know, in any crisis, whether it's this a real pandemic or a false pandemic, as we have, it's not totally false. I mean, there is danger to chronically ill people, but not to normal people. Your biggest enemy is high density population areas. The higher the density of population, for example, on the East Coast, along the New York, New Jersey, Boston corridor, you have an average population density of 1,000 people per square mile. Out west here in Utah and Idaho, where I live, um, it's 35 people per square mile. You can see that diseases do not spread as rapidly in rural areas, if at all. And that's why you always want to have a bill. And now I realize most people have to stay within the major metros because of work. But as I point out in my book, Strategic Relocation, even those people can have relationships that they develop with family, with friends, or if they have enough finances to have a small retreat or a small uh, rural piece of property that they can flee to if necessary under conditions of war, social unrest. And the reason I think that social unrest is, is inevitable is because the Russian Chinese military doctrine is to throw an electromagnetic pulse strike, an EMP strike, prior to the physical nuclear strike to soften up the country and to make it go black. And so within three days after losing all of our electricity, there will be social unrest because have you seen people panicking going to the store unnecessarily? You know, toilet paper, that's the least of your worries, really, when you talk about what happens when a nuclear war comes. But you need to be able to have advanced information to know how to get and have a place to go. Uh, in strategic relocation, for example, I cover every state of the union. Uh, and I tell, for example, I don't know if the audience can see this, but in the book, I have pictures of each state. And I have color coding of the various land use. Uh, the red here that you see are Indian reservations. Uh, the white is private property, so you'll know where you can buy. I show all of the military targets in every state. You can see in the Seattle area, in this picture, that the Puget Sound area is full of nuclear targets, including nuclear submarine base at Bangor, uh, Washington. And this allows uh, people to easily pick areas that are safer uh, to go to that won't be free uh, or that will be free from actual nuclear attack uh, or social unrest because social unrest will happen first in high density population only very slowly does it move out into the suburbs and then into the rural farm areas so there's a great deal of safety in rural living for many reasons so mr skousen could you kindly give us a brief overview of your book, Strategic Relocation. Say some more. You did touch on it a while ago, but say some more about the book as well as give us some information regarding off-the-grid living. Okay. Well, the book, first of all, starts out with the basic threats that you face. You can't prepare to relocate if you don't know what threats that you're going to face. Um, 
And there's a lot of what I consider false threats out there, some real threats. Uh, and um, I cover that in the first part of the book. Now, I cover specific threats that have to do with location, such as pollution, um, uh, the liberties that you have, how various uh, liberties are under threat, whether it's First Amendment liberties or Second Amendment uh, gun liberties. There's also medical liberty. You know, I really feel strongly that the establishment has put this mentality into the American people that you've got to rely on what doctors say. But doctors are completely tied into the big pharmaceuticals and they only know drugs. For example, in COVID-19, uh, unless you're dying uh, and getting a pneumonia kind of syndrome, you don't go to the hospitals. Once you get into their custody, you're only going to be stuck with the drugs, and then you're cut off from vitamins, you're cut off from the natural remedies that can really knock down a virus rapidly without any side effects. Don't get too enthused about the quinine theory about this malaria drug is, uh, you know, cures. The point is there are many, many um, side effects of uh, the malaria drug quinine, which you have to be uh, aware of. And natural remedies that God gave us don't have any of these uh, side effects. So um, the important thing that people uh, need to realize is that uh, safety is not only having a safe location, but how to get there as well. And so uh, I was covering the first half of the book really is about all the various threats. I cover tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes. There's maps about where those are and how to relocate around those but the second half of the book is the most important because I take all of that general data about uh, medical freedom, homeschool freedom, um, uh, religious freedom, uh, gun freedom, and other things. And then I rate every single state in the, in the book and every province in Canada according to how they rate on everything, including traffic, including population density. Uh, all of those things, you have a list under each state and it shows you how this state rates. And then I, toward the end of each state, and I have a colored map on each state telling you where the safe areas are, where the, diff where the difficult areas are. And I also cover all the major metros in the last portion of every state. And I say, if you're in Dallas, Fort Worth, you know, how do you get out of that major metro? Where are the safe areas? Where are the routes to get out of that area? And I teach people how to avoid the beltways. The beltways are like a moat around a city and you can't get past those beltways if those entry and exits are clogged. Mm -hmm. In a, Like in Katrina, you know, you couldn't get on or off the freeway because it was all clogged. However, I teach people that if you get on Google Maps and you zoom in and you look around those beltways, you can see four or five entries or I mean overpasses or underpasses on the beltway that don't correspond to an entry or exit so they cannot be blocked you can get out under the freeways under the beltways in those over or under and there's only a few of them you've got to know where they are and that's some of the practical advice i, I give in strategic relocation because if you're going to get out by vehicle this is a problem with the yesmanship that we've seen in covid 19 is that you close down everyone and say nobody can drive and suddenly you can't get to your retreat unless you have a pilot's license, you know, and hmm. have access to it. But I think a little bit of civil unrest is going to be necessary and civil disobedience is going to be necessary. It'll take a while before they lock down things and you ought to, if you've got a retreat, you've got a place to get to, you got to get out while the getting's good. If they get stopped in the first hour or two of a shutdown, you know, I say, I didn't hear about it. I'm on my way home. And so they just keep, you know, letting you go. So you have to be really prepared to understand what's going on here. Um, so, and that's so strategic relocation, two major parts, the first bigger threats. And I might also say that I cover all the foreign countries, too. A lot of people think getting out of the United States is the way to go because they won't be hit by this preemptive strike that's going to hit American military forces. But I caution against that. I've lived in Latin America for many, many years, South America and Central America. And even though they may not have nuclear strikes against them, the number of people in these countries that understand liberty and that understand uh, and willing to resist is infinitesimally small compared with the number of Americans who understand the Constitution, 
who are Christians who understand how to resist. And not all Christians understand that. A lot of them have been fooled into thinking that Romans 13 means you just say yes to anything the government wants. And I'm sure you know that that's not true. Only when it matches God's law and what God inspires us to do, do we follow government. Mr. Skousen, you're preaching. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that's, it's true. It's that's true. excellent. So. Yes. Now, what are some of the, the top reasons that you would give to individuals to start making preparations to become self-sustaining? Self-sustaining, living off the land. Have you covered, have you dealt with such things like living off the land once you get there? What a person needs to do in the rural districts, in the mountains, in country uh, places? Yes, I've covered those in my other books. The Secure Home is 700 pages, and it covers everything about how to be self-sufficient, including solar generators, uh, water uh, wells and pumps, and all of those types of things are in this big book, The Secure Home. And it's just been recently updated to the fourth edition. There's a lot of new things out there in solar, for example. It used to be that everything that you had from your solar panels had to go into a battery bank, in order to be used within your home. And now there are new inverters out there where they can take the electricity from the solar panels directly right into your panel without even being connected to the grid. And that's something very, very new and very, very important. Also, the new battery technology I covered in my book, the lithium ion phosphate batteries last, uh, you know, probably 50 times longer than lead acid batteries. So that's they're, they're more expensive, but they're still the cheapest per watt per lifetime of the battery, even that they're more expensive to buy initially. But it's very, very important to also understand that you don't make a retreat into a, a visible fortress. I specialize in my design work to have people understand that you want to make it look completely normal. You don't want to have big, massive shutters or something that are visible, or you don't want to have great big cyclone fences you know, with barbed wire on top that tell everybody this is a this is a space that must be hiding them. You can see that, for example, in YouTube about this big cube that looks like a board cube in Los Angeles with big two foot thick shutters, and everybody on the internet knows about it. I mean, that's the most unsafe place in the world because it's advertised as a secure facility. So you don't you have to do these things in private. That's why I encourage people to learn how to do the basic construction things that they need to do this safe room so that they can do it on their own after the building. If you're building new, you get the building permit, but you have this vacant space that you, you make into a secure concealed room after the fact. Because, you know, if you've ever read the book by Corey Ten Boom about hiding people, hiding Jews in World War II, we're going to be the Jews of World War III. The Christians, the people who believe in conspiracy, the people who believe in prophecy, who don't go along with the New World Order, we're going to be needing to hide our fellow Christians. And so you've got to prepare in advance to have safe rooms that are secure. And that's why you want to make sure you find a place that has basement potential. There's no better to find to do secure construction than in basement. Mr. Skousen, you brought your hammer and you brought some nails with you today you were putting those nails in a sure place praise god praise god for that now thank you very much yes i will have to bring you back some other time if that's okay sure okay how can individuals uh receive your books your materials well, they're all uh, sold on amazon or on my website, joelskousen.com. Skousen is spelled S-K-O-U-S-E-N. And I also encourage people uh, to take a look at my World Affairs Brief. It comes out every Friday because it's only about a dollar a week for my view of what's going on within the deep state and what they're trying to do. Also, because I'm very aware of this war coming up, I intend to give my subscribers advance warning so that they'll know when this is coming insofar as possible. And that's going to be very important if you have to get out of, of town by car or, or by some other means, or even by foot, you want to have some advance notice so that you're not caught in the mass of humanity that's trying to escape the cities when they melt down someday. 
And that's on my website, worldaffairsbrief.com. In fact, your listeners can get a free sample copy of that just by emailing me at editor at worldaffairsbrief.com. And I'll send them the latest issue, which happens to be about why coronavirus is not a deadly virus and why this is a, um, a very problematic shutdown of the government. Unfortunately, Donald Trump is resisting the call to shut down the whole nation. And uh, I appreciate that very much. Thank you so much. Um, last question. Many folks believe that if COVID-19 should pass, then things are going to be back to normal business as usual. To that, Mr. Skousen, you say what? I say that's true. The reason it's going to pass is because when warm weather comes, viruses cannot survive in, in warm weather. And so uh, this is going to pass, but the, the problem that we're dealing with will not pass, and that is the government has gotten used, people used to saying yes to a shutdown for almost any pretense, as long as the experts. So we're now vulnerable to any other uh, pandemic that they want to proclaim. So even though this one will pass, and it has to pass because, look, you can tell this is not a deadly pathogen when most people only have mild symptoms. If this were truly deadly, like anthrax, everybody who tested positive would be dying. And this is not true. So this will pass, but the danger will not pass because we have become accustomed to, and that's because of lack of good information and lack of listening to the Spirit of the Lord, but we have become accustomed to saying yes to government. And if it were not for Donald Trump, we'd probably have a major depression on our land because a yes man president would shut down the whole country mm. unnecessarily, I say. Mm. All right, friends, there you have it from one who is experienced with a wealth of information regarding, as he calls it, the deep state, new world order, the puppet masters. However, he's giving us information that we can be not only forewarned but to be forearmed in these last days putting on the whole armor of god spiritually mentally financially as well as in a practical sense being in the rural districts that we can also be able to help others who are fleeing from civil unrest fleeing from the encroachment of their liberties, even pauperism and poverty. We need to be self-sustaining in these last days. All right, friends, again, until then, let's remain faithful and be hopeful, knowing that our Savior will watch over us. Father in heaven, we thank you for this prophetic insights. Keep us faithful, we pray. And we also pray for Mr. Joel Skousen and his family. Thank you for using him today. Is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, Amen. Maranatha.